thank you very much. Can you all hear me? Uh, okay, I'm Belgian. I live in Italy and I'm speaking English. So how much more European you can get, I don't know. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, best practice in uh, alien squirrels management. Uh, best, best practice is a bit of a big word. Uh, I would rather say maybe better practice than we used to have before the EC Square project started. Now, when we originally wrote the project, we wrote it for uh, the problem that the gray squirrel posed for the conservation of red squirrels. But we soon found out that there was another problematic species present in uh, the region of Lombardy. It's the third one you see on the photograph, which is Cavoschurus eritreus, or the palace squirrel, which lives in the province of Varese, uh, and which was known, when we started the project, it was known it had serious impacts as an invasive species in other countries where it had been introduced, like for example in uh, Argentina. Um, when we started the project and when we had an idea what we needed to do, uh, the knowledge of our distribution of the gray squirrels was uh, not very accurate. So a big part of the first year of the project was spent in monitoring actions, which then resulted in what we can call, at least for Lombardy, a new uh, distribution uh, map. Uh, which you see here. So you see the large meta population in Piemont, the area. In you see this? Ah, wow. Uh, Liguria, the population where you already heard uh, Andrea, Marcel Andrea Balduzzi talk about, and which will be again a um, subject of the talk later on. And then the situation in Lombardy, which in reality are many uh, uh, relatively small to middle sized populations, partly isolated from one another. Um, but distributed over a wide area in the northeastern part of the uh, northwestern part of the region. Then, of course, there's Umbria, we all know where we are now. And uh, population work, we haven't heard anything about in, uh, in this uh, workshop or symposium, which is the gray schools that live around uh, Padua. Now, when we started the project, there were people that were not really convinced that gray schools uh, are a problem were a problem in Italy. They said, ah, okay, probably you will not have box fires here, so probably it uh, is not going to be so disastrous a situation with red squirrels as in the UK. But uh, historical data that were taken from this is the region of uh, Piemont. If you see in 1970, gray squirrels were just around here, just uh, south of Turin in um, uh, Stupinici forest, red squirrels were everywhere. When time progressed, the gray squirrels continued to expand their range. The gray areas are areas where gray squirrels colonized and the red squirrels disappeared. So by 2012, the situation was with a large area with only gray squirrels, an area around that where gray squirrels started to colonize and red squirrels still hold on, and then uh, the rest of the region where red squirrels were still present because there were no gray squirrels. When we looked at this in detail, I think, uh, I've stole most of this talk from Sandro, I have to be honest with this. <laughs> burrowed, burrowed it, not stolen. <laughs> uh, so we might see some of these slides again. This is more a detailed story. So these are two by two square meter, kilometer squares where red squares were present and gray squares were present. Since 1970, 1990, 2000, 2010. So what you see very briefly is that while gray squares spread, the red dots disappeared, it means that red squirrels go extinct, went extinct, so in the past now, went extinct in all of these uh, two by two square meter squares. Uh, what we found in summaries over a 40 year period, we had red squirrels going extinct in 62% of the squares, uh, which is an area of about 1,700 square kilometers, which is a very big area. The same you see on the graph, right? Gray squirrels continue to expand in, the, in uh, the landscape. The proportion of areas, the, the amount of area occupied by red squirrels gradually decreased. So there was clear evidence that uh, interspecific replacement competition of red by gray squirrels also occurred in Italy. Now in the UK, uh, the gray squirrels are on islands. The UK and the British Isles, Ireland, Northern Ireland, and uh, England. 
uh, in Europe, uh, in Italy, uh, the grey squirrels might have some kind of barrier, barrier uh, from the high Alps, but there are many um, lower valley floors where grey squirrels can spread into neighboring countries like France, Switzerland, uh, and so on. So um, in 2011, we started this uh, live project, EC Square which was the first project in, uh, in Italy on uh, grey squirrel management for red squirrel conservation. It was also the first on the whole of the European continent outside the UK. Um, in reality, although we already uh, knew a lot about what was going on in the British Isles and we did have a lot of background information of squirrel research and mechanism of competition, Practically, as far as management is concerned, we really had to start from zero because many of the techniques that we knew and that were used in the UK could not be used in, uh, in Italy because of uh, differences in, in the law, so it was legally possible, and also in, uh, let's say, differences in what is uh, publicly accepted as methods for uh, euthanasia of trapped animals. So the main aims of the project were, uh, in, for a big part, were technical uh, objectives. So what are the best methods to trap and remove uh, grey squirrels from areas uh, where the social, the social ecological contexts were different? Uh, so we had to know, uh, we had to have a sufficient knowledge about the ecology of the species and about techniques of uh, trapping and removing animals. And then, of course, there was how to uh, communicate, how to face the public opinion, um, which we could guess uh, how it was at the beginning of the project, but we really had to find out by, uh, say, scientific communication uh, methods to uh, use questionnaires to find out what people really thought about the project and about uh, alien species in general. Um, now, uh, since I already said in the beginning, it was not only uh, grey squirrels we had to be concerned about, but also the palace squirrel, the Calasulus eritreus, uh, about which we didn't even know when we started the project whether it was to be considered an invasive species. I mean, we knew it was there, but we didn't know any of its uh, potential effects or real effects it could have on native red squirrels or on other uh, aspects of ecology or ecology. So the project was, let's say, um, constructed with three big blocks. Uh, the first the preliminary actions that we talked about, we had to have a good idea about the distribution, of course, if you want to control the species, you have to know where it is, and more or less how many there are. So we used hair trip service, visual service, uh, and we already started in some areas directly with traveling, especially in areas where red squirrels were still present. Uh, as far as the palace squirrel was concerned, we had to know whether there really was competition with red squirrels, so whether competition for food, for space, whether parasites are involved. Tomorrow there will be a very interesting talk about to what extent uh, grey squirrels or uh, alien squirrels in general can be a problem for disease transmission and for parasite spillover, and uh, showed that these interactions had some effect on the squirrel population dynamics. And then, of course, the main part of the project was management. We had to get hold of an efficient management strategy and apply it on the field. Uh, you already saw, I mean, those of you who were here also this morning, already saw this slide uh, in the talk of Barry Sandro. The project started off very badly. We had an incredible amount of opposition uh, with a lot of uh, both legal actions and intimidations and even uh, destruction of, uh, of traps and intimidation of people working on the field. So we started off quite badly and people, uh, some organizations tried to stop the project at all costs. Um, this made it uh, even more clear that an efficient communication uh, action plan was necessary and that we had to work, uh, as you already heard also before by both Craig and uh, Cor, is that we had to work with positive messages. With positive messages, the red squirrel is our squirrel. Uh, we have to convince people that the red squirrel is actually threatened because in some areas it's very easy to see them. So people say, but why do I have to care? I mean, the red squirrels are all over the place, but not there where there are the alien species. 
And then we have to say we have to sacrifice something if we want to save uh, the rescue. Uh, the setting, the sec the, what we have to sacrifice are the alien skills. Uh, the other thing that we um, wanted to achieve was when we started the project, it was still possible to uh, buy gray squirrels or pala squirrels in any uh, pet shop uh, in, in, in Italy. So it was clearly that it was useless to go and try to eradicate or control gray squirrels or pala squirrels population on the field, while on the other side, new animals could come in uh, at any time through the pet trade. So one of the first important achievements uh, the project was able to, uh, to bring home was that we uh, could uh, organize um, the trade ban of uh, three squirrel species in Italy, which was also a starting step for actions at European level later on. Then, because of all the problems we have had with um, contrast against the project and uh, attempts to stop uh, actions by um, legal uh, steps, we decided to make a management plan that uh, divided the study area in the three regions. So we made a plan separately with separate legal documents also for Lombardy, one for Piemont, one for Ligure. This meant that in, in one of the regions the project was stopped because of a uh, legal action against it, the other two regions could simply go on working. Uh, also, the aims were, of course, slightly different. At the beginning, we were, we were very, uh, we were very positive people, so we, uh, we were convinced we could still eradicate the red squirrel in Lombardy. Uh, in Piedmont, that was considered practically and logistically uh, infeasible, so we went for a campaign of uh, control of the populations. And I'm not going to talk about Ligure because that's Andrea's uh, job later on. Um, so the trade ban I already mentioned. We were able, uh, we wanted to have a trade ban, to be honest, for all animals of the family Shuridae. So all three ground squirrels and chipmunks. Uh, but that was, that was impossible to bring, uh, bring forward. So we decided to stick with the ones that we considered the most dangerous ones. So the three already, the two already present, the gray squirrel and Cabochimus eritreus, and a third species, which is the fox squirrel, Shimus uh, niger, which we entered because we thought that if gray squirrel trade is stopped, this might be the first other species that traders start to, to uh, sell and buy, uh, and maybe even uh, start a worse problem than one of the gray squirrel. Uh, now we'll now say briefly the main, the main results we got in each of the regions. So in Lombardy we, had to div we divided the, um, the area of presence of gray squirrels into uh, some sort of, we call macro areas where we could plan the actions on the field for each area separately. Because of the large number of animals present and the limited number of manpower we had, we only worked in three of these and four of these. Uh, this one is the area where this comes Shurus, and we worked in these three areas because they, we, these were areas where there were all still red squirrels present, uh, or we considered them as the areas mostly at risk for expansion and colonization up to Switzerland or up to the east of the region. Um, as I said already, we had to start more or less from zero, so we had to find out what were the best, uh, the highest trapping efficiency, so what methods uh, gave us the best uh, efficiency. So we tried different types of trap, we tried different time periods, uh, number of controls, morning controls, afternoon controls, with or without pre-baiting, and what the best method seemed to be was the one with single life, Traps. I mean, you would say, I mean, if you have many animals, maybe in a, in a multi capture trap you get more animals, but that occurred very rarely. So the result was the best traps are single uh, capture traps. Uh, the best trapping period is to do three days or three days and a half maximum in a week and then use the other two days to pre bait in other areas or shift the traps around because when you go on for more occasions, longer occasions in the week, your trapping success. Uh, drops, uh, drops very strongly because the animals that got used to the traps already are taken out. 
And then seasonally, trappability, those who work on squirrels in the field know that very well. Trappability of squirrels changes drastically during the year, and winter and spring are the best periods to trap them because there's less natural food available. So for Lombardy take home measures is that uh, it is possible, at least locally, to eradicate gray squirrel population. But there is a big if here. That's only uh, if access to sufficient, uh, to a sufficiently high proportion of the area interested uh, is possible. I mean, if there are private estates where people do not allow you to work, and these private estates host a large part of the population, uh, and then a local education com com uh, campaign becomes completely uh, impossible. We also found out that to have efficient control or education uh, campaigns, you really need more than one method. So life trapping is okay, can be the major method, but we have to look for other methods that of course have to be always uh, take into account uh, the animal welfare rules. I mean, we used life trapping followed by uh, euthanization using CO2, which is the method that by all publications from animal welfare um, uh, groups is considered the most appropriate one for animals of this size. Um, of course, another method that makes the sacrifice of the individual uh, the least traumatic is would be shooting because the animal is just moving around, a good shot, and it's immediately that without any stress at all of trapping or handling. So we need more than one method, access to a large amount of areas. Uh, the positive news uh, of the work we did in Lombardy is we saw that while gray squirrels were gradually removed, uh, we would have, this is a cumulative number of red squirrels, we would have an increase in the number of red squirrels that are caught. So we saw also that red squirrels recolonize areas where red gray squirrels were removed in a natural, uh, spontaneous way, as also Greg found in uh, on Anglesey. Okay. Then shortly something about uh, the other species, Carlos Schuh. So is there really, was there really competition going on? So we did really uh, pure scientific research here, capture mark recapture methods. We took uh, body condition indices of red squirrels, reproductive indices. We marked red squirrels with radio colors to see spatials and so on. And did the same for uh, pala squirrels. So we had several study areas where we were not killing pala squirrels, but where we were also studying them. Now, some of the main results here is that this maybe seems a very difficult graph, but here you have the relationship between the size of the squirrel, the measure of hind foot length is an indication of how large your squirrel is, and here you have its body mass. And what you see is that if you take just a given size of so a squirrel with a hind foot length, red squirrel, hind foot length of 58 millimeters, he weighs about 300 gram when he's together with pala squirrels, but if you look at areas where no pala squirrels are present, the animal weighs about 10 grams more. This difference becomes bigger uh, for larger sized squirrels. So this is an indication that red squirrels, when they live in uh, co-occurrence with pala squirrels, they seem to have problems in maintaining a sufficiently high body weight, which can have a lot of consequences uh, on reproduction, on survival, and so on. We also looked at spatials with uh, radio tracking, radio colored squirrels, and uh, this maybe it looks like uh, artwork of some modern artist. It's really our kernel, uh, 95 kernel, uh, kernel uh, polygons of home ranges of red squirrels in, in red, pala squirrels in yellow. And the only thing important here, the main thing important here, is that there is an incredible amount of overlap. So where the two species live in the same area, there is no niche partitioning. It's not that red squirrels live there and, gray squ and uh, pala squirrels live there. They all mix up. And so a red squirrel finds himself surrounded by a large number of pala squirrels. So does this have any effects on the population dynamics? So we looked at three parameters, breeding rate of red squirrels, survival rate, and population density. So there is a little difference in breeding rate. So red only areas we have in, this is annual breeding by females over the two breeding seasons. So nearly all females, or all females in this study, bred at least once in a year, at least one liter per year. In the Red Palace area, this was 90%, so very short, uh, very uh, not much less. 
but what you can see is there is much, much lower local survival. So the local survival over a year, so how many of us at the beginning of the year present were still present at the beginning of this next year, was only 11% in areas where red squirrels co-occurred with feather squirrels, while in red-only study areas, the same habitat type and so on, uh, this was uh, on average 53%, so a reduction in survival in presence of uh, palace squirrels, and consequently a much lower density. So densities of red squirrels, which you all know red squirrels are really, uh, we would say in, in, in Italian sfigati, so animali sfigati, they're really, they only got low density, they have relatively low breeding rates and so on. Uh, and we have about, this is, I know this strange number is zero points, so it's around, say, 40 animals on a square kilometer. While in the Red Palace area, we had only had five red squirrels per square kilometer. So that's one animal every 20 hectares, more or less. Very, very low densities. So yes, there was clearly an indication of strong interspecific competition also with palace squirrels. Briefly in Piemont, uh, in Piemont, so there was the other strategy of control. These are, these colors on the map are the pre alps so you can see the gray squirrel uh, range in different years. So gray squirrels have now reached the pre alp being uh, forest bells, which means they have continuous forest cover to move into France, uh, which is of course a, a very big problem. Um, so we, we decided it was impossible to try and get an education, so we wanted to see if we could um, implement control methods that would allow to maintain red squirrels in strongholds, so in areas important for red squirrels, if we could remove grey squirrels from historical estates because much of the area of occurrence is very, very fragmented, so it's a bit like Anglesey, there are very few small woodlands with grey squirrels and all the rest is, is non suitable habitat. Uh, the few woodlands are often historical estates in Piedmont uh, of with um, very nice parks or even um, really natural woodlands of, uh, with oak and hornby. And then we also wanted to see if it was possible to stop the spread of grey squirrel along dispersion corridors. Uh, in the estates where you can have very high densities, uh, 10 to 20 squirrels per hectare, if you remember the it's the 0.4 of the red squirrel. Um, these, in these areas, the gray squirrels were quite easily to trap, and you could remove a local population, a subpopulation, really in a very short time with a limited amount of effort. Uh, along the woodland uh, or the riparian corridors, so many of the dispersal corridors, the gray squirrels in Piemont are riparian corridors, so they are woodlands along uh, rivers. Uh, small streams, um, which are characterized by some patches of very good uh, woodland quality and others of just a just, uh, very narrow corridor. So what we want to see is that if we put a trapping grid here, if we can avoid gray squirrels from moving this direction into the areas where still red squirrels occur. So we trapped intensively gray squirrels here and then we controlled whether in these areas uh, the red squirrels could survive and whether gray squirrels occurred or did not occur. And this seems also to be a, a method that can be used for future gray squirrel control. Uh, Jane Van Ervi, I'm not going to talk about because uh, that's the subject of one of the next talks, so I'm going to close down. Um, so best practice is really a bit of an exaggeration. So we, we did improve uh, a lot our knowledge about uh, gray squirrel red squirrel ecology, other squirrel and red squirrel ecology, and about management techniques. Um, as a, I could call it side effect, side effect sounds a bit negative, but uh, as a side result uh, from uh, the, the whole life projects, the, the communication actions, control actions, management actions, research actions, we, we did uh, make a very good uh, scientific production with 15 uh, scientific papers for book chapters uh, during the, the course of the project. We increased our knowledge of mechanisms of interspecific uh, competition and mechanisms of control of uh, grey squirrels and competition between grey and red squirrels. We demonstrated uh, for the first time the existence and, re and relevance of uh, competition, interspecific competition, and also the mechanisms of interspecific competition between the palace squirrel and the 
red squirrel. And, uh, but this is again for the talk of uh, Dr. Romney and tomorrow. We showed that the threats is not only direct, because we only know from Britain, can be by different kinds of parasites, micro and micro parasites. So as a whole, we did improve uh, conservation and management of gray squirrels. Uh, but it's clear that uh, we only make a very small step uh, in the long process that we still uh, have to, in front of us if we want to stop the spread of the grey squirrel and conserve the red squirrel uh, in Italy and as consequently in the rest of Europe also. Thank you.